Hi, Pep. Yeah. Uh, for you, in football, what would you say is the importance of having a good rival? Yeah, as much you are on top, you have more rivals. The most important game uh, here in Manchester area uh, for the fans. And, uh, and it, it excites me. <laughs>
um, and I know what what derbies, what what they are, uh, what rifles, um, uh, what they are doing with each other, and I think, and I know it's the m most important game uh, here in Manchester area uh, for the fans, and uh, and it, it excites me. <laughs> you want to be involved in such games. Uh, it gives uh, such a good vibe. It gives so much energy and. Uh, you do everything to win that game, clear. Question that's been posed to a number of managers over the first six, seven weeks of the season, no one yet has been able to come up with a definitive answer. How do you prepare for a player with the characteristics and ability of Erling Haaland? It's, it's, we don't play against Haaland, we play against Man City. And they have a team um, and more than 11 players, uh, but we have also and we are conf convinced of our uh, capabilities. And if we act as a team, um, uh, in and out of position, yeah, then, then you can beat such opponents. And that is the belief where we have to, uh, to, to, to get with us when we, when we line up, uh, when we start the game. Uh, and we need it over more than 90 minutes and they clear. Fire. Uh, I wonder. Referring to, to Harry, uh, but also players in general, um, your thoughts on the mental health of players? You know, he's getting so much abuse online, on the pitch. He looks like a player who's lost so much confidence. I mean, what are your concerns about that and the, and the responsibility, perhaps football fans, but everyone in general has towards, you know, the human beings? But it's a, it's an aspect of of top football. So it, it's an ex, uh, aspect of our work. So we set conditions for that. Uh, as a manager, we also have experts around to, to help and um, yeah, to to coach the player, the players, the team in the right direction. How do you do that? I think he's, he's doing doing um, quite well, but it's, every player is a room for improvement. And if he believes in his skills, he will be quickly back on the level and even more uh, that he, than he did. And I'm, once again, I'm convinced of that because I see his capabilities and uh, that's really high. OK, that concludes the yeah. first section. Yeah. Uh, you, you want a question in the first section? Yes, please. Okay. Um, you've gone from losing the first two games at Brentford game to being manager of the month. How would you sum up what you've, you've changed and what's been done to get to this position? It's football. It's, so the, uh, the daily rates, I would say. So uh, football is always about result, and then the daily rates you get positive or negativity. And I see it more in a pattern. Uh, I see it more on the longer term. I think we played a really good precision. Uh, so then the first two games uh, was cleared uh, down, but you see already then the base we made uh, in the precision. And then you know, we now we win obviously four games, so we're happy with that. But also we see uh, still lacks in our um, in our game, what we have to improve, and that's what we're working day by day. Stones fitness. Um, Ninja. <laughs> how far off is he from returning? He will be back when he will be ready. Is it a hamstring injury? Yeah. And Laporte, how close is he to coming back? He's training really well. He's training uh, well alone these uh, days because everyone was in the national team. But uh, yesterday, today, tomorrow, he feels good. It's an opposition manager you know quite well this weekend. You, what are you expecting from Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United from what you've seen so far? Always I expect in front of the opponents we're going to face, always expect the best. The quality they have is no doubt about that for many years. Uh, and they come with a very good results, a tough side, because winning in, in Southampton always is not easy, but especially Liverpool and Arsenal at home. So, and yeah, good momentum for them. Hi, Pep. Yeah. Um, your physio, Mario Pafundi, joined the Norwegian national team uh, the last two weeks uh, to take care of Erling. Can you 
tell us more about the background for that decision because it's a bit rare to see someone working with both a club and a national team. No, it's not weird. When it's an event like European Cups or World Cups, many officials go with the players. Uh, not for the case of Mario, that's an exceptional official. So, uh, always I said to the club, the most important department, the most important department in the backroom staff, everyone is important, but especially the most important one is the officials. They take care of the legs and and Erling last season struggled a lot in Dortmund because he was mostly all all year uh, injured and arrived here with a, a little bit problems after a small surgery in summertime and I started to work with Mario, with Federico, with other guys and uh, and thanks to them, of course his work ethic and the rest and uh, he can play regularly when last season was not possible. It is thank you for the, of course Erling to it by the hands and the treatments of the guys. So. Uh, the clubs uh, uh, earn a lot of money when the players can play, and most of the time it's thanks to the physios. So that's why, like Mario Erling knows each other and ask him to go to national team, and and they did it. He was very thankful of the club because he said thanks because they, I mean, the club has basically made him be able to play many more games than he used to do. He's played every game this season. He played two times 90 minutes this international break. Do, do you have any thoughts on what, what the issue was or what you've done differently than... No, you have to ask to Mario. I'm not fishy. I don't know what they do. What they, what they do is try to make the place available and not just Mario, all of them. So It's so important the way they work. We have an incredible talent guys and that's why I have the place to be fit. Otherwise, they could not play, and it would be not sent. Pep, um, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to have to play 13 matches in the next 43 days. Everyone is going to do this. Everyone, yeah. Not yeah. everybody, no, but the, the guys who are uh, yeah, European. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much a match every three days. Um, in that same period, how many proper training sessions, tactical sessions, you think you're going to be few. able to have? Few, few, few. If recovery, be ready. Try to rotate as much as possible the, the players, everybody involved. Everybody's going to play the next games. Everyone is in both minutes. Someone more than the other ones, but everyone is going to play. You said few sessions. So th how does that change the impact of a manager in that period? Since I am manager, I've always been like that. 11, 12 years ago, we start. Never see this game, so it's not a surprise. It's not news. So adapt, adjust. Recover well, physios, ice and uh, in the legs, and uh, train specific what you need, what you believe you have to improve for a few times. Hi, Pat. Um, on the game itself, you've had a fair few Manchester derbies now. How does it compare to previous games at Barcelona and Real Madrid, Bayern versus Dortmund? How does the Manchester derby specifically compare? How is it different? What makes it special? In, in, in Spain, Barcelona, Madrid, but in Barcelona, more noisy. The days before, the day after, it's more, more media, more everything. The rest in Germany here, perfect. You can work, people expecting, enjoy to watch the derby, and that's all. And is it different for you as a manager, this game, this fixture? Do you feel different? Not much. Yeah, of course it's important. It's a derby of uh, the big rival in the, in the city. And, and uh, yeah, but try to, to figure out what they're going to do, what, what we can do to, to beat them. So, no more than that. And in these kind of games, you don't have to make an extra motion or extra because it's where it is. Everybody knows it, the stadium will be full, and they will support us behind us, and, and of course they know we're going to do our best. I'm looking forward, anyway. And, and finally, with John Stones out, I guess that means there's probably a role for, for a Kanji on, on Sunday. How impressed have you been with him? Are you surprised at how quickly he's adapted to life in the Premier League with City? Well, I played really well since I arrived. We cannot deny that. Uh, he knows, he has all the skills that we need. And especially professional, a serious, intelligent person. So it's well prepared here. And uh, yeah, there's another option that uh, that we have. And, and for this is a long, long season. Hi, Pat. Um, 
I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, how, how is Calvin Phillips? Did he have to have the operation? He's much better. He's still good. Well, the surgery was really good, and he has almost all... Yesterday I spoke with him. The mobility is getting, getting better. Yeah, it's really good. He, he took uh, the right decision. Otherwise, he couldn't move forward. Every training session, every two times, three times, out, out. And, uh, yeah, now we solve this problem, and as soon as it's ready, come back. Hopefully, can get in time to go to the World Cup, and when, after World Cup, come back with us. Thank you. Hi, Pep. Um, I know you said John Stones will be back when he's back, but does it look like a long-term injury? Is it a, a short No, but I think it will not be four, five, six weeks. It will be less. Yeah. So Normally, be hamstring can be between four, six weeks. I don't know. I said to Melissa, I don't know when I'm going to come back, but he's, she, he's going back, but I think maybe two weeks, ten days, two weeks, hopefully. And in terms of um, Rick, is he available to start, do you think, this weekend, or will the derby come a oh. little bit too... Emmerich, Laporte, do you think? Uh, well, a long time, he's injured. But the important is uh, what we're seeing in the in the training session. He's he moving well, and uh, his ability with the pass is exceptional. So, yeah, it's, it's, another, it's important to come back for this crazy schedule that everybody has, have another, another player. It's so important. And for him as well, for you know, to come back. Hi, Pep. Yeah. Uh, for you in football, what would you say is the importance of having a good rival? Yeah, as much you are on top, you have more rivals. Yeah. Normally, when you are in the middle, you have few rivals. As much you are on the top, you have more. But they having, increase. Having a big rival um, playing well, do you think that's important for yourself? Yeah, of course. Big rivals make you better. Of course, we have to do a perfect game tomorrow. They punish you for nothing. They have a quality in the short spaces, up front. All of them have a mobility, speed, physicality in the middle, uh, the quality in the middle with Ericsson, Bruno, Fernandez, and of course physicality with McTominay, Casimiro. You know, central defenders so aggressive, uh, good pace outside. So, yeah, it's a, Man United always have been like that. So here in Old Trafford we were. Much better than Eddie had in these many years, last year. So, but in the same time, so as I said, I'm looking forward, and I think we are prepared to face them. Hi, but um, Kevin De Bruyne has said that for a lot of people in football, it's about um, negativity and fear. But playing under you, it's about extreme positivity. <laughs> uh, what do you say to players before big games like this one? Nothing. This big game, few. There is a plan for the way they attack, for the way they defend. You have to adjust, and and that's all. And always, I believe, is a this is a a big opportunity. Our job, football, to express our our or the skills the players they have in front of the thousand millions of people, and we have to do it for them. And the best way is they be yourself and. Try to what you are as a football player. Show every day as much as possible. Uh, don't be a scare. Uh, be up front and and try to you know play good. And if you do it, the consequences will be points, points, and victories and victories. So I prefer to be active than reactive. And and the teams always have been. I've been as a football player and especially as a manager. Always have been like this and always will be like that. There's a lot of history between the clubs, uh, especially one incident uh, between uh, Arling's father, Alfie, and Roy Keane uh, back in 2003. Uh, is there anything different with these big matches that you can sense in the players? Uh, it's a long time ago. It was an accident it happened. Everyone from the win. There's no friends there. And try to, to beat them. So. Sometimes, not necessary to be a derby. To this, sometimes this kind of situation happen can happen in the training session. Sometimes, so football is feelings, emotions, and sometimes it happened. But yeah, it's a long time ago. Is that the is that the most important thing about derbies? Just the players remaining calm and keeping the keeping their heads. No, I don't know. We cannot be lazy in this type of games. Neither uh, I would say that. Uh, 
what you need sometimes to be expressed emotions and feelings they came from itself give it to you so it's not necessary of course going to talk how important it is but uh, it, yeah I, I think what here is more decisions before you act the decisions are being made for your brain is so always much better and be calm and take the right decisions but to take the right decision you have to be calm if you are anxious it's difficult to take the right ones and in these important games the external situations to give you the extra sometimes you need you know to play in different games you, um, over the last couple of months you've seen more enthusiastic about the atmosphere inside the Etihad are there any reasons you put that down to? I would say they are proud of uh, these guys so they have given to them for for all of us the guy the people who love Man City so these players give many years many good things many good moments many of course titles but to get the titles have to be good performance and they they produce many of these since I think we are together so that's why the people is I think can go to the stadium with a okay put us pressure uh, it's important they, they we can feel the pressure of them especially in the open as well and and demand the best of ourselves we need it so always I want tomorrow they are active they are they come to enjoy, to be passionate. After tomorrow, it's not just okay a football game, and and the men are the best of ourselves. Otherwise, against these opponents, it's difficult to win. Um, last season in the Champions League knockouts, you brought Kyle and John back uh, from injuries. You said it was worth <laughs> the risk to play them. Is the derby something where you could bring Ime straight in? Is that one of those games, or is it? Too many? Uh, it's completely different, and the problem we had is that we didn't have another option in that moment. So, uh, Kai was injured, and the first game against Madrid, they joined just 20 minutes, and had Fernandinho help us out to play as a fullback. So, it's a different situation. So, if I decide, we decide to play with Ames, not a problem. We do it, but now we don't have this disurgency because we have alternative with uh, with Ruben, with uh, Manu, with uh, with Nathan. So. But it's important, he's back, it's really, really important. And do you feel a need to be kind of more aggressive in this first half of the season, given that you don't know how things are going to be after the World Cup? And uh, our performance? Yeah. And the way we play? Yeah. yeah. No, no, we, we, and listen, we, of course we talk six in six weeks, we have the World Cup, you have the World Cup, and one injury in that period will be difficult, we risk, you know, that's why you have to be focused in every, do you do your life on and off the pitch? Um, but we, we don't plan absolutely anything differently uh, so with the next game we try to do it because I don't know what's going to happen World Cup nobody knows it we talk about the days off we have the staff and players don't go to the World Cup when we come back and the trainings we'll do and after it depends of group stage quarter, quarter finals semi-finals final 